I feel like I'm living in this like golden era of technology. Uh, I was at a dinner recently with a number of other, you know, AI and agent founders, and, and the only analogy we could think about w was like 1996. It's like we're living in the dawn of the internet. I'm Sam, and I'm the author of uh, Principles of Building AI Agents. Our startup, Mastra, is in this current YC batch, and we had a lot of um, folks come over uh, to do whiteboarding sessions um, who are building different kinds of agents. Uh, and it, one of the things that we realized was that there are a lot of um, basics of AI engineering that are maybe counterintuitive or not always obvious to folks. And we wanted to write the uh, canonical guide on what it was like to build uh, an AI agent or an AI application. In the course of a 30 to 45 minute whiteboarding session, there'd be like two or three key unlocks for each, um, for each startup or each person coming in. Um, sometimes, and, and those unlocks would differ. Um, for some people, it was taking a complex prompt and breaking it down into uh, a number of simpler prompts using a workflow graph. Maybe something like, instead of diagnosing 12 different symptoms in one LLM call, uh, break that up into 12 different LLM calls um, and try to diagnose one symptom each and then join those together. There's a, a startup started by a couple of ex-Stripe engineers um, that reached out to us uh, a couple of weeks ago and they'd been building a, a whole framework for, for building agents because they were building sort of 30 or 40 agents for various uh, companies. Uh, and they told us, um, hey, the, the framework you built is, uh, is so good that we're gonna throw out the, um, the framework we were building in house. Um, and it was really interesting to see how their use cases, how the basic infrastructure they needed was fairly similar across agents. Some of the, some of the most um, wide ranging cases we see in this current YC batch where um, you have folks generating CAD diagrams for aerospace or Maybe they're doing medical transcription for vets, or maybe they're um, generating Excel sheets for, for private equity. But it's a real range of agents across almost every vertical. The surprising thing is that right now, um, AI is a good idea for almost every industry. And there's just a huge amount of um, new startups bubbling up following that kind of basic formula. I took all the primitives of AI engineering, whether that's prompting or memory or tool usage, um, evals, tracing, structured workflow graphs. Um, and I, I sort of broke out a, a chapter or a couple of chapters on each one. Chapter two, choosing a provider and model. We actually recommend that you should just start by using OpenAI. Uh, it's the default. It's pretty good. Um, unless you're using code, then you're or you try and generate code, in which case you should probably use Claude. Um, but just do the simple thing and don't overcomplicate it, even if you know that you're eventually going to need some sort of an open source model. Just don't worry about the infrastructure to start off with, just use OpenAI. One of the things that people also don't do when they're writing prompts in the beginning is give the model enough examples. The models need examples of input and output. Um, this gets called single shot or few shot prompting, depending on how many examples you give the model. But the more examples you give, the better uh, of a sense it has of what you're actually looking for. The funny thing is, um, we've actually just found that people who have previously worked with, say, a virtual assistant have a head start on this. You can be much, much more detailed than you think is possible. A good way of um, seeing how detailed it's possible to be uh, are to look at some production prompts used by, um, like say the bolt not new um, production prompt, it's about 1700 lines long. And you can see like the extent to which you can be detailed and give instructions to the model. Chapter four, agents 101. One thing that people ask us a lot is what exactly is an agent? And usually the way that we answer that question is to talk about self-driving cars. You know, maybe your car has some sort of lane assist Maybe you're using like Tesla self-driving on the freeway, right? And um, maybe you're in a Waymo and you're going around San Francisco without a human sitting in the front seat, right? So there's a lot of actually different levels 
Um, uh, and, and agents are the same way. The more your agent is doing, if you're giving it tools, functions that it can call, that's one thing. Um, if you're giving it memories, if you're running it in a loop where it can sort of create tasks uh, and then like execute those subtasks, right? The more of these things you do, the higher level of autonomy that you're actually um, giving your agent. The converse thing is that you may actually um, find that um, you gave your agent too much autonomy on a particular task and there are sort of, uh, you actually want to reduce the amount of autonomy you give and sort of more specifically define that in order to increase, um, I I increase the uh, accuracy on that given task. And that's often when people turn to these sort of structured workflow graphs. Chapter six, tool calling. So tools are basically functions that your agent can call. Um, the interesting part about tools is that your agent needs to have well semantically named tools. So like you should probably call it your function multiply numbers instead of do stuff if it in fact multiplies numbers, that kind of thing. Function names matter a lot. Um, I get, you also want to give your agent examples again of when it should be calling a tool. Um, really detailed tool descriptions, uh, as well as hopefully a system prompt. Even um, inside the inside the system prompt, it's helpful if you give uh, the tool descriptions there as well. Um, wh when an agent has the ability to call functions, you can think about that as like a huge jump up on the spectrum of autonomy. Chapter eight, workflows 101. Another sort of interesting um, thing that people think about a lot is how to coordinate um, different agents. Um, and if you have a specific task, you can often break that task down into various pieces. Uh, for example, um, if you look at pop, if you look at say the Replit agent, it asks you, um, what the architecture should be, um, before it starts going and writing code. Um, and so you, similarly, you might want to have one agent that asks your user sort of the high level overview of what they want before you have another agent that kind of goes and actually executes that. Um, these are different types of um, system prompts you'll need, different types of examples you'll want. Um, and so you need to kind of coordinate the agents together in, um, and there's various different ways of doing that. Um, it, you could have an agent calling agents. This is called like a supervisor model. You could have a, a, a structured workflow graph where you can sort of pass control off from the first agent to the second agent in a defined way or you could um, leave it up to the agent to sort of like perhaps choose between different kind of like workflows uh, to execute. Um, the interesting part about this, these kind of multi-agent um, architectures is that you have a basic set of primitives, which are the agents and the tools and the workflows. Um, and it's up to you to decide what's, how to compose them in, in helpful and interesting ways. And sometimes this can take a little bit of tweaking um, to make it right, you're going to have to try it one way and eh, that doesn't quite work, but then you go and do it a different way and then it works better. Chapter 13, RAG 101. Here's how, here's how to think about RAG. Um, RAG is basically AI assisted search. Um, you can kind of embed the semantic meaning of phrases. And so instead of just searching for, you know, dog and finding all instances of dog, you can find, you know, puppy and other things that sort of feel like dog. And that's what this retrieval augmented generation or RAG kind of helps you do. There's a few steps in RAG. The first thing is you need to take whatever your inputs are and you need to kind of chunk them into different sections. So, you know, um, that might be a, a, a few hundred or a few thousand characters in each chunk. Um, you might break down a document by sections. Then you need to embed them, which means essentially taking each of those chunks of text and transforming them into a usually 1,536 dimensional array um, that rep that encodes that meaning. Um, after you kind of embed it, you, you sort of put it into a vector database, um, you can then retrieve it. Um, so there's various algorithms that, you know, you, you sort of, you have a, 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 you have a, now you're just doing matrix multiplication, right? You're doing some math behind the scenes to take a vector and return other vectors that are close to that vector. You know, it's like point in n dimensional space. You can think about this sort of like a geo search, right? I want to, I'm in dog patch and I want to look for restaurants in dog patch, you know, so I, I'm sort of like geo searching using the lat long of, of dog patch or, you know, uh, or, or Brooklyn or, or wherever you're searching, right? Um, after you get your sort of set of top results, 
um, you do what's called re-ranking, um, which is using more computationally intense algorithms to sort of say, okay, yeah, I know these were like the top 10 matches, but like, let's figure, let's sort of re-rank these top 10 and, and maybe that, you know, number seven actually moves to number three. Um, and the reason there is because you want to figure out what the, what the actual top ones are. Um, so some people use an LM to do this. Some people use a service like Cohere. One of the sort of controversies around RAG is that some people think that it's becoming increasingly less important over time because you can just feed more and more information directly into the context window of the LLMs. I don't know. I think time will tell. We publish Principles of Building AI Agents on Amazon if you want to get a copy. Or if you want a digital copy, you can put in your email at mastra.ai forward slash book.